coat down here I have to follow. <laughs> we'll get started here. Uh, good evening. My name is Richard Matice. I'm uh, the retired chief of police of the city of Kentwood, Michigan. I'm also the leader of the team that will be assessing the Jacksonville Police Department over the next several days. I'd like to introduce the other member of our team here, uh, Captain Melvin Lang, who is uh, with the Village of North Palm Beach, Florida Police Department. Uh, he and I uh, will be, have been sent here by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies Incorporated of Gainesville, Virginia. They have authorized us to assess the Jacksonville Police Department, which is a candidate for reaccreditation. The Jacksonville Police Department has voluntarily contracted with the Commission to work toward reaccreditation and thereby continue to demonstrate its professional excellence. When the agency originally entered this process, it received the Commission's Standards Manual, uh, which contains now 480 standards encompassing all facets of law enforcement management, operations, and support functions. This agency last accredited, or this, the Commission, I'm sorry, last accredited this agency in 2010 after determining it had demonstrated its compliance with all applicable standards. The agency's proofs of compliance are on file at the Jacksonville Police Department, 206 Marine Boulevard. Since then, the agency has attempted to maintain those standards. Our responsibilities as assessors for the commission is to revisit the agency and to verify that it has remained in compliance since it was last accredited. Michael Yanero, the Chief of Police of the Jacksonville Police Department, has appointed David Teeter as the accreditation manager to oversee the, the reaccreditation process for this agency. In accordance with the Commission's public information policy, the agency's candidacy for reaccreditation has been publicized in this area, and the agency has arranged for this public hearing. The public hearing is intended to provide interested citizens or employees of the agency an opportunity to address this assessment team concerning the agency. Any comments that you make will be considered by us as we review the agency and will also be reported back to the Commission. If you wish to supplement your verbal comments with a written statement or exhibits, you may present them to our team at the time you speak. Or you may send them to the Commission where they will be reviewed when the agency is presented for reaccreditation at a formal commission conference. You may mail your written remarks to the commission at the following address. And I will make this address available to anybody who desires after the meeting, but it is the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies Incorporated, 13575 Heathcote Boulevard, Suite 320, Gainesville, Virginia, and the zip code is 20155. Now at the beginning of the meeting, a sign-in sheet was made available at the rear of the room. Uh, those of you who indicated des a desire to speak, we give an opportunity to address us in a few moments. Uh, we'd like, uh, as, as seven have signed up so far, uh, that you limit your comments to five minutes approximately. Uh, I don't, I won't keep real close time on you. Uh, if you wish to speak with any member of the Commission's staff, you may reach them at a telephone number, area code 703-352-4225, and again, that will be available to anybody who's interested at the end of the meeting. Uh, the Commission's staff representative for this agency is Ms. Maya Mitchell. You may also email your comments to Kalia at Kalia.org, placing the agency name in the title line, subject line. I'd like to remind you that this uh, meeting is being recorded uh, and the recording will be made available to the Commission uh, for its review. 
Before we start, are there any questions from the audience uh, that we can answer? Okay, I will call your names and I will initially apologize for any mispronunciations. Um, I'm from the north, remember, that's a challenge for me. But th this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, first uh, signing up was Dan Oliver. Dan Oliver. I work with the Jacksonville Onslow Economic Development Office, <clears throat> and I'm also a citizen of the city of Jacksonville. I really comment in two areas. The first, uh, prior to joining my current position, I spent about 40 years in the electric utility industry. The last 11 of those were in this community and serving this area and, and around our region. Uh, as a part of that, when we entered uh, what I would call crisis situations, often in our area, recovery from major uh, hurricane events, storm events. The Jacksonville Police Department has always been a key lead organization in the process of uh, recovery from those events. As you can appreciate, when you're uh, coming out of a major storm, safety for the family is of key uh, importance in our community. Safe transportation uh, to work, having routes uh, to work that they, folks can get there is very important, not only to the family for their well-being, but also to those employers who have businesses to run and operate and the customers that they serve in our community. Jacksonville uh, Police Department has always been consistently available to help with that. In our case, where we had to move crews in congested areas, they've helped us with that process or where we needed to have uh, assistance at a particular site that was so badly damaged we needed traffic control. They've always been uh, great partners and great leaders in this community when it came to restoration and returning our uh, community to normalcy following major events. In the case of economic development, um, there are a reasonable number of clients who look at a community and, and one of the key issues for them they're sensitive to what the crime rates are, uh, what those statistics have to tell them, and when they evaluate a community on uh, the various key components that they'll make their decision to locate or not locate or perhaps select another area, uh, among those is that crime, what the crime levels are. I am unaware, and I talked to uh, the folks who preceded me at the, at the Economic Development Office, we're unaware of any project that's ever had issue with the level of crime in this community. And we attribute that to the efficiency and the effectiveness of the Jacksonville Police Department. Uh, we measure very well when the comparisons are made and we're very appreciative of that. And it's important to our community that we're able to make those presentations. Finally, and I think you'll hear this from others here this evening, <clears throat> the Jacksonville Police Department, our police department, uh, is professional, consistently so, uh, they're very efficient and effective with those folks that they deal with in the community. They're helpful to businesses when they have questions about security and other issues that are important to them. Uh, and every day we can count on them for being advocates and, and uh, bringing our community together, making it a safe place to live and work and raise our children. I uh, would say that we're proud to have this organization in our community and very appreciative of the services they render. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you for your comments, sir. Uh, Ms. Kathleen Holbrook. Good evening. It is my privilege to be here tonight to speak with you about the attributes of the Jacksonville Police Department. Uh, I work for the Child Advocacy Center, which is a division of the Onslow County Partnership for Children. As of this coming Saturday, we will have been open for three years, but the planning began five years before that, and Chief Unero and his team were instrumental in our planning process in helping the community to recognize the need and the value of having a central place for sexually and physically abused children to be evaluated. So it took about five years before we were able to open our doors and since that time, we have had daily interactions with the Jacksonville Police Department. 
A Child Advocacy Center receives all of its referrals from law enforcement and or Child Protective Services. So we see the detectives of JPD at our center multiple times, excuse me, multiple times per week. And they also participate on our various multidisciplinary teams. We have a case review team that meets on a monthly basis to review all child abuse cases that have been received within our community. And together, we strategize. We look at the investigation, the intervention, the treatment, and the prosecution of the case. We also meet as a community child protection team and a child fatality team to look at the things that are occurring in our community with relation to children and their health and safety. We have a multidisciplinary team which is composed of agency heads and Chief Unero spearheaded that team and he also chairs that team and they meet on a quarterly basis and we look at the community issues that exist with our children and whether or not there are any barriers in our community. Um, finally, uh, Chief Unero recently joined our board of our agency, which has been particularly helpful because of the lens through which he looks at the situations in our community that affect children. So um, he has been very, very important to us. His detectives are well trained. We see them on a regular basis. We partner. We go to training together and I've had an opportunity along with my staff to train his personnel so that they are enlightened when they encounter child abuse situations um, as line officers because we want to ensure that those children are evaluated as quickly as possible. And we do that in a collaborative fashion so as not to traumatize the children any further than they already have. We recognize that abused children do not need to be in the emergency room receiving their exams and our center has an on-site medical suite so that we can facilitate that entire evaluation in one location under one roof. And so if we get the call from a detective or a line officer that we need to do an evaluation, we can facilitate that quickly. And this afternoon we had a 20 minute response to a situation. So I think that's the value of working together as a team. As a citizen of the city of Jacksonville, I'd like to um, comment on the visibility of JPD. Um, I see them daily throughout my travels, at my workplace. They have a very quick response time. Um, if we have any issues, if we need an officer to come, they come immediately. And they are always professional and helpful. Um, if I have any concerns, if I have any need for assistance, I can call the chief or any member of his team and they are always extremely professional and helpful and willing to serve. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Juni Christian. Good evening. Good evening. And thanks for being in our great city. We will give you the keys to our hearts, but not the vaults, okay? <laughs> um, first, I'll speak as a citizen. I believe the response time in Jacksonville, from the time you call or, or have a need for a police officer, is about three minutes. It may be less than that. In my case, sometimes it's less than that. I have the distinction of being the domestic violence um, director for the Onslow community. And so I have a need for direct involvement of the police department. But let's go back a couple of years to tell you about the heart and soul of the police officers or the leadership that has continued a legacy to today. It was the police department through its vision and through its um, contact with victims of domestic violence that saw the need for a domestic violence shelter. Because I believe back in the day, police officers and th they're still the same types of officers that are still around. Chief Yanira being one of them and, and so on, with those kinds of officers that decided that, you know, when we get a victim, they had to pay out of their own pockets to put them in a hotel. So they found a need for a domestic violence shelter and established that vision for the citizens of Jacksonville many, many years ago. Now the legacy continues today because the Jacksonville Police Department continues to support that legacy. Let me tell you one special way they, they support it. If there is a domestic violence call, when the, when the Jacksonville Police Department shows up at the doorsteps of that victim, 
they have proven to us that they're not going to leave until that victim gets some kind of a service that says you have a place to go, either by giving them our number or referring them to us. So they've got a vested interest in just making sure that that victim is safe, and I guarantee you that they will not leave that doorstep without knowing that that safety does, is provided. The legacy also continues is that sometimes the perpetrator um, of uh, violence against women sometimes have a tendency to want to get into the shelter. And all we have to do is to call the chief and say, Chief, tonight there's a heightened sense of alert. Or we can call the police department and say, there's a heightened sense of alert tonight. Can you just have an officer park in, the, in our parking lot or just drive by? And 100% of the time, that response is, is, is there for us. And that gives us great comfort, and it also gives the victims that are in the shelter a tremendous amount of comfort that they are safe. The last way that, especially for the shelter, that the legacy continues is the personal investment of time. Now, my vision of a police officer is someone who is strong and tall and handsome and <laughs> absolutely, uh, 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 but I've never seen a police officer make a fool about himself dancing for domestic violence. <laughs> this police chief did not think it was too much of a robbery of his time and his effort to put on John Travolta's old white suit with black tie <laughs> and dance on behalf of domestic violence, sending a strong message across this community that not only will I put my money where my mouth is and arrest you, but I will also do what I can to make sure that this shelter continues the legacy that it, that it started years and years ago. I, I shudder to think what would happen if this, if this type of police department was not around. I see it as um, power projection without being too intrusive in the lives of the, of the community. You see them and you know that you're safe but they're not so intrusive that you have to, you know, you, that, that, that it's a crazy place in our community. So um, thank goodness for the Jacksonville Police Department. I support them. I support them as a citizen, and I especially am appreciative of them because of what they do to help victims of domestic violence. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, and we appreciate the insight about the chief. He didn't tell us that. <laughs> he tries not, he tries to live that down, but here, as long as I live, I will even send you a video of it if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Richard Woodruff. Sir. Good evening, Chief and Captain. Thank you very much for coming to Jacksonville. As the city manager of Jacksonville, it's my pleasure and certainly my duty to work directly with the police department. Under the council manager form of government, as you very well know, the mayor and council establish the policies, they adopt the ordinances, they adopt the budget, and then they authorize the management to enforce and execute all of the, uh, those activities. Currently, the mayor and council have shown their continued leadership in bringing to this community the very best in a police department and in public safety. Let me give you a couple of examples. Several years ago, the mayor and council raised taxes certainly not something that they do lightly or that any elected official does lightly. Why did they do that? Because they recognized the need to build a new center for public safety. Today, this $23 million facility, which will be almost 96,000 square feet, will house the primary administrative wing for police and fire. It will also be the home of the 911 dispatchers and also our new intelligent transportation system. Currently, the mayor and council are also supporting an effort to bring a new 800 megahertz system to our community so that we can improve our radio communication. And as I mentioned, we're also improving the traffic signals through an intelligent transportation system. All of that is a direct reflection on the elected officials' commitment to continue to bring quality law enforcement and safety to this community. You may not realize it, but tonight you're in the youngest community in the nation. If you looked at the entire census population that listed every city in the United States, you would find that Jacksonville, North Carolina is the youngest city. We are basically a little over 24 years old. And Chief, I know it's hard for you to believe, but I'm just a little older than that 24 years. Why is that important? 
Well, Jacksonville may have an official population of 80,000 people, but we're the home of the Marines and the sailors who are the 911 call for this nation. Mm -hmm. What our police department does is it protects and defends those who likewise protect and defend. This is a unique community, and this police department and public safety department are very unique in their commitment to helping the young Marines stay safe when they're off base. We have an excellent working relationship between the base and the city of Jacksonville in many ways, water management, transportation, and certainly police and fire. One other example of the leadership that this community receives through the fire department and through the police department is the joint work on programs such as National Night Out. Roughly a week ago in this community, we had probably 10 to 12,000 people come out to a city park to participate in the National Night Out. I will tell you that was the largest single event in the state of North Carolina. Why is that? Well, it's because the police department has a long-standing relationship with this community. It is the community that values that relationship. Do we have ups and downs from time to time? Yes. Do we have citizens who call my office and are disgruntled about a particular matter? Yes. But at the end of the day, we believe in fair, honest, hardworking, and very proactive policing. I will tell you in my career, I've been privileged to work in many communities. I will tell you I have never worked in a community that has a higher leadership standard or a higher ethical standard than this police department has. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Mayor Phillips. Thank you, gentlemen, for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. I'm going to make it brief because I've sat where you're sitting tonight <laughs> before, and I know that you've probably been, been working all day, and you probably want to get out of here. Um, just to give you a little background, I've, I've mentioned it to you before. Uh, I, I became a sworn Jacksonville police officer in March of 1974. I retired in November of 2004. During that 30 years, I saw this Jacksonville Police Department go through many changes, none of which was as profound as our decision to become a, a nationally accredited law enforcement agency. Uh, it changed forever the tone of this agency. It pushed us into contemporary times, and it also uh, caused us to take a step back and look at the quality of service that we offer to our community. Uh, through this assessment, we were able to make a lot of changes, and I'm talking about changes for the good. And accreditation gave us that blueprint to bring our agency in, up to excellence. And to this day, uh, this agency, uh, this police department, and this city stands committed to the concept of law enforcement accreditation. Uh, Chief Inero, who has been with us now since 2004, is dedicated to this cause. Uh, he's a, a true, a tested, tried and true professional law enforcement chief executive officer. Um, and he is dedicated. Uh, and the thing about, I, I'm kind of jealous when I think about David working with us now because when, I, when we first got into the process, I don't even know if my chief was completely sold on the idea at the time. Um, I know that our, our city manager at that time was, uh, is now one of our council members, but uh, he brought this idea forward to the chief, and uh, to say the least, and he was a great man. He had to be taken, uh, drag, kicking, and screaming into this because it, I guess it kind of changed him a lot too because he was an old time police officer from, from Ohio, and you know, it was different, but it was the right thing to do, and he knew it. And we, uh, f we have continued in that fashion since then. And David Teeter, is a retired police captain with our agency. Uh, David and I worked together in accreditation for a long time. We both have the same philosophy as far as that's concerned. He's a, he, he's, a, he's a heck of a cop. He's a cop's cop. He knows all about this business. And if anybody in this world is a stickler for professional behavior and having a professional agency is David. You know, uh, he was, 
he was my right hand man when we went through the process in '96 for reaccreditation, the first uh, reaccreditation, and uh, I can't say enough about his uh, his ability to do the work. And but the whole thing goes back to the chief again. You know, if you if your chief uh, chief's not sold on the philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get the rest of the agency sold. And the whole thing about accreditation, it has to be agency-wide. You know, it's, it's, it's something that sure. can't be held on to by a few people and be successful. And the one thing about the Jacksonville Police Department is I, I feel very confident in the officers that are on board uh, with the agency and that they all strive for excellence. And that accreditation is no longer that thing we looked at way back and started looking at in 1987. It's just a way of life for us now here in this police department. And uh, I'm going to stop there because, again, like I said, I know you want to get back to your hotel eventually tonight. But anyway, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you, Mayor. We appreciate your comments. Mr. Hargett? I'm Glenn Hargett. I serve as Assistant City Manager for the City of Jacksonville Communication Community Affairs. I'm also a citizen and resident, a longtime resident of the city of Jacksonville. In my past life, though, before I worked with the city, I was chairman of the, the 911 committee for the county, and I've had involvement in helping to found, be a founding member of the Onso Community Outreach, which um, has a soup kitchen, a homeless shelter, a free clinic, and a program that helps needy children at Christmas. I'm also on board of directors of several organizations, not the least of which is the Onso United Transit System. So I speak from all those perspectives in here as to what I'm going to say about the Jacksonville Police Department. The Jacksonville Police Department, one of the most notable things that I find of them is how proactive they have been. The community-oriented policing that Chief Unero brought to the concept, we saw that demonstrated when we started the Weed and Seed program here in Jacksonville. I, we served as the nonprofit side of that of the the seeding part of the weed and seed program, and so we could see how they were actively involved in helping to build the neighborhood structure to help be responsive and improve their own communities, and it had an effect. I also got to see how the community oriented policing and the weeding out of problems dealt with the application of the tipping theory and others that said that broken window needed to be dealt with. I've seen officers actually clean graffiti off of bus stops, do things like that so it's not left there for a very long time and so that it does breed other things. And there's other people in the city who can do that work, but they do it just to make it happen and get it done quickly as it was. Most recently I spoke before a group of hoteliers in the city of Jacksonville, another hat that I wear is working with the Tourism Development Authority. And I was there to talk to them about how we spend the tax money they help collect for us. Right behind me were police officers who were talking about helping to reduce crime in their facilities. This was a very proactive one in which the hoteliers were actively talking with them and trying to find out more information about actions they could take to reduce the potential of crime in their hotels. And they were exchanging information on items that I know that they found helpful in treating other crimes as it was. I want to talk about the needs of the community. You've also already heard testimony as to how the police helped to found what is now the Onzo Women's Center. You've heard testimony about the Child Advocacy Center, that their direct response to the needs of those people who they see on a daily basis could benefit from that event. And I want to tell you about that in addition to those type of actions, we've seen those neighborhood organizations that I spoke of, some of which are still in the play after the Weed and Seed program, and we saw an empowerment of people who felt able to come forward and speak to police, that they were able to share information about their troubled neighborhoods, and they got responses of it. And we've seen this activity replay itself over and over again in multiple neighborhoods as it was. I last want to speak about the professionalism of this department. They are consummate professionals at what they get done. I know the chief abhors uh, deviation from that. I know that it's a culture and I truly respect what the mayor said of his seeing the differentiation that the accreditation process made in how it transformed this agency and I can say that, that we see now the effects of that, the adherence to standards, the notable number of policies that are in effect, the ways in which they react to activities that they wish to correct and go forward with from that place. Lastly, I want to speak about, as um, Dan Oliver said, about having seen these officers in times of distress of this community and how they respond. Recently, we, um, we had some tornadoes come through our community, and they actually caused great devastation. The police department was instantly knew what to do. 
helping to organize uh, activities to ensure that um, people were taken care of in a mobile home park that unfortunately was in the bullseye of this, of this um, tornado as it was. And we've also seen them in the good times. The um, city manager um, spoke of the, uh, the pride of this community in the National Night Out. I think a lot of that is a true testament to how safe the citizens feel and how they were able to gather in a location that once was known, unfortunately, for a crime-ridden area that now is not, and that they were able to come out and speak uh, and, and come out and make their personal appearance at an activity that testified that they wanted to support the police department. What we have is a, a police department that's integrated in the community. They are involved. Um, they are responsive. And without a doubt, um, they are very dedicated. Thank you for letting me speak in front of you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chuck Henry. Good evening, gentlemen, and evening. welcome to Jacksonville. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chuck Henry. I'm the senior resident Superior Court judge uh, here in Jacksonville, and I hold court basically in southeastern North Carolina. Uh, I wish to commend uh, Chief Yanero and the city of Jacksonville for seeking this accreditation and also for seeking uh, reaccreditation. Uh, I know the, uh, qual the qualities you require, the standards you referred to are stringent and rigorous, and I know they've met these standards previously and are seeking uh, again this year to be recertified, and I know that the, the standards have probably uh, increased um, since the last time they, they were uh, certified, so I commend them for that. I have a uh, unique perspective, I guess, of the Jacksonville Police Department and the position I hold, but I also uh, came to Jacksonville about one year after um, Mayor Phillips took his oath of office as, uh, as a uh, patrolman. Uh, I joined uh, out of law school, uh, the Jacksonville Police Department, the other law enforcement agencies here in Onslow County as their police attorney. I served in that capacity for about a year and thoroughly enjoyed it. My career took me then to the district attorney's office where I uh, uh, prosecuted cases for about three years and then into the private practice of law where I uh, defended cases for about 18 years before I uh, became a Superior Court judge. So I've seen the Jacksonville Police Department from many different perspectives. And I can uh, tell you without equivocation, I've seen the steady improvement uh, in the department from the time I first got here to, to, to the uh, uh, level of, uh, of expertise that it has uh, achieved up, up till now. And I commend them for that hard work. Um, being a judge, I don't require much of uh, the, the officers that come before me, but I do require certain things. One, they be on time. Two, they're prepared to testify. And three, and most important, they testify objectively and honestly to what their investigation uh, disclosed. I can say uh, that they do that uh, when they appear in, in court when I'm presiding. Uh, they do an excellent job, um, and I've enjoyed working with them, with the uh, of course, my job is somewhat different from uh, the, what they appear in court for. My job is to um, uh, preside over the cases and uh, mm -hmm. uh, allow the jury to make determinations as to guilt or innocence. Um, but they have appeared. They've uh, conducted themselves professionally. I think they've been well received by the jurors of this uh, county and uh, I, I fully expect them to continue to do so. I think the Jacksonville Police Department enjoys an, an excellent reputation in the community for service to the community, uh, for their crime investigation, and for their court presentations. Um, I enjoy a professional, I believe, cordial relationship with, with many of the law enforcement officers that make up Jacksonville Police Department. Uh, they are, are welcome in my home in fact, uh, at 3.30 Sunday morning, uh, I received a phone call and uh, th they uh, came out to my home. They were seeking a search warrant and they're welcome to do so. That's part of my job. Uh, they came uh, and uh, as they always have been, their paperwork was in order and complete and uh, they conducted their business and uh, I tried to go back to bed. 
but uh, that's part of my job and I welcome them to call me and uh, follow through on any uh, help with uh, consideration of search warrants or requests for any court orders they may have for like telephone records mm -hmm. and I encourage them to do so um, the work of the uh, the prosecution of cases in in this county re requires that uh, uh, the investigative reports uh, be complete, be promptly uh, produced and turned over to the, uh, the district attorney's office, um, to the people that make the decisions with regards to the prosecution and the assessment, evaluation, and decision making that goes on before a uh, case comes to court. And I commend the, the police department in, in making, uh, uh, enhancing their capabilities in doing so and encourage them as the um, uh, technology in, increases uh, or improves that they continue to uh, improve with the technology to make those those instruments those uh, those documentation information uh, quickly uh, to the district attorney so they can uh, assess uh, the cases and uh, uh, produce uh, for the defense counsel what they're required to produce and also give the opportunity for the parties to try to resolve cases short of trials and I've seen that uh, all the time, that it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very difficult task, time-consuming task. It's a lot of information, a lot of data, uh, but Jacksonville Police Department uh, stays on top of it and uh, appears that uh, we've been able to dispose of cases as quickly as possible, knowing that uh, they have a difficult job to do. The district attorney has a dis difficult job as well as defense counsel. So I commend uh, all of them for that. Uh, I'd op like to open my uh, this short period I have up here to any questions you all may have about uh, the judicial system and the, its relationship with the Jacksonville Police Department, if you have any. We had the opportunity earlier today to speak to an assistant district attorney and uh, uh, learned quite a bit about the uh, court system as well. Good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to be thank here you. and uh, uh, enjoy your stay here and do come back. Uh, uh, enjoy our, our community again. Thank, Thank you, you, Your Honor. That concludes the list of everyone who has signed up to uh, speak. Is there anyone else who would like to address? Hearing none, going twice, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. And anybody who would like the address uh, or the phone number for the commission, I'll be happy to provide that.